Rita here and welcome to another video. Today I'm painting a, well, a rather simple, I suppose. It's another one of those sketchbook um, experiment videos um, because I really wanted to paint um, some citrus fruit, as you guys have maybe picked up by now. That For me, that's, this is kind of a comfort um, painting. <laughs> Whenever I am in a bad mood or just like recently, I've been sick for quite some time. It, it's just a, a way to get me back into the rhythm of painting and just remember how to paint again. And that's for me any kind of citrus fruit or fruit in jet fruit slices. I love painting fruit slices. <coughs> Excuse me if I'm coughing a little bit in the background, but uh, my throat is still itching a little bit. I've been having a cold for um, two weeks now. That's what you get for going out uh, between a lot of people when you just work from home. Yeah, I'm sorry for a little bit of, um, you know, this camera going out of focus. It's usually lately when, I don't know why exactly it happens, um, but that's usually when I have a lot of white paper, <laughs> so that's unfortunate. Um, something that we have to get used. I don't know why it's doing it so much. <sighs> I just, I, I've learned to live with it, I guess. So what I'm starting with is just two colors and I'm uh, making myself paint with two colors that I normally, well, I kind of love, but I normally don't use very much. I'm using ultramarine blue, but that super granulating one that I have in my third row uh, in my palette. These are my granulating colors. And the other one is that, uh, I think it's a shavening of blue. Uh, from Old Holland and that's one of those um, as I call them <laughs> novelty colors <laughs> uh, This is basically a very very opaque beautiful blue kind of reminds me of um, it has a lot of white in it It reminds me of like this watered-down gouache and um, but it's still a beautiful and also very granulating color Well very maybe not the best word here to use, but it's a fairly granulating color so I wanted to use those two just just, you know, to use something different, see how much I can push that granulation without going nuts. Uh, as you guys know, I'm still trying to make myself paint a bit more freely. So as you can see, I'm slapping that paint kind of hap haphazardly around, but it has, um, it has a pattern, okay? It really has. As you can see, I'm going backwards. So I suppose I'm doing a little bit of negative painting. I'm going from, um, I'm leaving some shapes behind as I'm going on with another layer of those blues and I'm really adding a lot of water and a lot of paint and just seeing what, what, what can be done, <laughs> what the paint does. It took forever to uh, dry, <clears throat> excuse me, it took forever to dry, but it was definitely much freer. <laughs> painting than what I normally do. Uh, so I, I really think that it was a great, um, you know, exercise. Now, while I'm filling in those uh, shapes, I wanted to tell you something really exciting because I have reopened my Patreon. <laughs> I've had Patreon a while back, but I had to uh, close it because, well, let's put it this way. I had like this idea about what Patreon I wanted to have. But the truth about Patreon is that you really have to find a good balance between the rewards and your time and your work. And I really, I, 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 was, I took more basically that I could handle and eventually started dragging and it just instead of being exciting, it became really a chore, especially when I had to do other projects as well. So I've closed it regrettably, feeling really like, like, like a failure. <laughs> But eventually, you know, I've learned more things. I've learned how to manage myself better. I gave it a really good thought about what... Kitten. I... <laughs> I thought about what uh, I really wanted to achieve with Patreon and just basically, you know, redesigning it. And so <clears throat> I've opened it again because uh, Patreon is uh, like this platform where I can... Um, put a lot of things that I can't on YouTube. Uh, the way YouTube works, you know, um, it's... I've noticed that if I don't make a certain type of video, 
my discover the way I'm being discovered and my stats, the analytics, they really plummet. They really drop really quickly. So I have to stick to a certain type of videos or my channel is going to suffer. And that's regrettable because of course I want to grow my channel, but I also have other videos that I would like to do, other things I would like to show you. I would I always wanted to make more full-time like painting videos. But, you know, these are not everybody's cup of tea. And as a working artist, I have to think about the money, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, so I figured that I could have those type of types of videos on Patreon. And for a little fee, anybody who actually wants to see them could see them. So that was a perfect, you know, kind of finding that balance <laughs> for me. And also, you know, it's, um, I, I always wanted to try doing podcasts, so I've decided to do that as well. Um, so yeah, if you are interested in, I'm, I'm not really, I'm telling you guys because this is my channel and you guys are watching me, but last time uh, when I opened Patreon, I made this huge deal about it and I made a video about it and just... And then it, it kind of, I, I put my expectations high and I feel like I gave everybody expectations. Like now I want to keep it a little bit more calm and collected and just see how, how things go and adjust and, um, and, and learn together. So yeah, just there's a link, of course, in the description. Um, just check it out. I already put a podcast, the first one. It's an hour long, um, just a video like, you know, well, you know what a podcast is, just me talking about all kinds of stuff. And I will be doing those weekly. So very, very excited here. <laughs> and in the background here, um, I'm still slapping that paint around. Yep. That was a really fun video. It came... The, the size of it was a little um, too big, I feel, for a sketchbook kind of, a, um, you know, experiment. Because as you guys know, I uh, don't necessarily have a sketchbook. Um, I haven't found a sketchbook yet that would fit <laughs> everything I need from it, <laughs> that would have everything I need from it. Um, especially that I don't know what that everything is yet. Uh, that well. So I often, whenever I do experiments, I will just use cheaper paper and, um, and that, that's, that's pretty much that. So in this case, this is the Arteza paper. It's the backside because I wanted to try that backside, um, which is smooth and see how, how it would go. And, and it works perfectly fine. Um, it's, it's not arches paper. <laughs> okay. But it's perfect for experiments. It doesn't handle much water. I mean, uh, it definitely buckles a lot more than I'm used to. Um, so th the reason why I'm saying that it's much, it's not really good for an experiment is because it really took me a long time. Uh, well, not per se, it's only an hour, tw I had an hour and 20 minutes of footage, okay? So that's not, I mean, perhaps it took me maybe a total of two hours to, to do this. Majority of that time I spent... Um, drying the layers. Drying this paper is a nightmare. Um, it really absorbs water <clears throat> and because of that it's just uh, it's really hard to dry it. <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, it's really hard to dry it um, because it just it just doesn't it just keep drying it and just doesn't want to get dry. <laughs> and I, I didn't really have time to do um, you know, to leave it aside. I wanted to paint it in one evening because that's what experiments are. They're just those little paintings that you do spontaneously. And perhaps I've had this idea of blue fruit slices. Um, I wanted to practice um, maybe not negative painting uh, per se, but I really wanted to get more depth um, into those fruit slices instead of just, you know, painting them next to each other. Um, I wanted to use those two colors in something um, and then I ha I was on a walk with my doggy and all of a sudden I felt, okay, today is the day. <laughs> I want to do it right now, even though it's 10 p.m. So that's what I did. And um, so I, I'm actually, it was, you know, it was it's not a really hard topic to paint. It was a little bit hard on me to get over that granulation and the blooms and just 
every single time uh, the bloom the paint blooms on me I feel like I'm losing control over it uh, which is, is absolutely not true um, it's just the the feeling I have um, and the thing is that I really like the way it looks when it's a little bit more you know bloomed <laughs> a little bit more rough around the edges I really like that um, that look and you can see me actually doing it quite often here where I'm just I'm not trying to keep the shapes perfect that's another exercise I'm trying to implement uh, I'm trying to have the shapes looser I'm trying not to fill uh, all the spaces leave a little bit of you know white here and there especially here you can see it on those little slices that I'm leaving white here and there or for example I'm going to change the colors add a little bit of water in between um, and all these different slices I was trying different techniques because it's such a simple painting <laughs> such a simple idea um, so that you can actually uh, concentrate on those those elements because they are so simple so you can f have fun with them a little. I don't know if that makes sense but because they're only pretty much you know there's there are three shapes here two main ones okay we have circles and we have those little um, triangles which are the they're not slices you know they're those little citrus bits <laughs> I don't know if they're cold actually I always called them slices <laughs> even though they are not mm. So because I only have those two shapes, um, I'm counting that round um, peel as a shape, but it's it's not really a shape. So, uh, so I'm really concentrating on um, making those slices look different. So each of them ha is slightly different. Um, so I'm using more water in some. I'm using more color in some. I'm mixing the colors in the other ones. Using single color in some other ones. But at the same time, I'm trying to have them all um, just follow some kind of pattern so that they are similar. <laughs> they all fit together. I think when you are painting these, this kind of painting, uh, when um, when you want... Because, you know, this is a simple painting. This is just a simple exercise painting. And you want to keep it interesting in some way because there's not nothing is going on in there these are just fruit slices okay just fruit slices there's nothing happening there's no action there's no story they're just fruit slices you could push it a little bit further maybe think about where these fruit slices are you know why is this a fruit slice bath or maybe a fruit slice tea you don't know that <laughs> i don't know that but my point is because it's a, such a simple topic you want to make it somehow interesting for the viewer. And so that's why it's a perfect opportunity to have it a little bit rough, um, to play a little bit with the textures, to have it a little bit more dramatic, I feel. To have, I love that when the colors are very bright and vibrant. I mean, I honestly tried to paint recently with pastel colors and it just does not work for me. I really want the the juiciness to, to show. <laughs> Are there any blue fruit, citrus fruit, actually? I don't think so. I mean, sometimes you see the pictures, but they're obviously photoshopped. I don't I don't think there are. Um, but I, I wonder, you know, if... Uh, I would like to try blue citrus fruit. I have a thing for blue food in general. Blue candy. I've mentioned it somewhere before, but blue candy. Oh my goodness, I love blue candy. Just because it's blue, because it's such an unusual color that you don't often see in... In nature, pretty much never, because of course you have like blueberries, um, and that's all I can think about at the moment. <laughs> but even blueberries are not actually blue. Blueberries have, you know, at least in my experience, they have red juice, so they are not blue. Um, so I, I but the blue color, I, I just like blue color. Perhaps I'm biased like that. So. At the moment, I'm working with some um, <clears throat> colored pencils, and I'm coming in first with the black. This is these are also Arteza colored pencils, by the way. I really like those pe uh, those colored pencils. Um, I'm definitely going to be coming back to them more often, and not sponsored here at all. I really, really like them. <laughs> um, so this is, I think, uh, this is not charcoal. This is the noir, the darkest black that they have. 
And the reason why I'm doing it is because the last layer of the darkest blue, <laughs> I've mixed in some of that granulating black that I have because I wanted it to be really dark. But the thing about that paint is um, the two, uh, the particles of the two colors, they separated. And I think the blue was just a little bit lighter, so it shows much more um, than the black, uh, which is good to know because um, just I learn a lot about my palette. I keep thinking about what other colors I need in my palette. And even though it's not particularly a watercolor color, I do need a black um, because sometimes you just you just want some nice juicy black. Although I, I have to say I probably will just get a black gouache for that because you can't get the black, black, you know, the, the, the blacky black, the, the perfect velvety black in watercolor. <laughs> you need to get gouache for that. So I actually will look into that. It's just something that popped in my head right now, this second when I'm talking about it. I like talking with you guys. I really do. <laughs> so because that black didn't show as much as I wanted, I came back with a colored pencil, just to darken it a little bit. I didn't need much of the darker color. I still want it to be, you know, visibly blue. But I'm also trying to be very rough with the colored pencil. And um, the the way I work with colored pencils is that if I apply it in one spot, I'll apply it everywhere else as well. Oh, sorry guys for sniffling. <laughs> I didn't uh, expect it to be this hard to talk. I mean, I've done a video already. Ugh, I hate spring colds. They are the worst. <laughs> Seriously, uh, even worse are summer colds because you are waiting after the winter for a nice warm day and you have a cold and you can't enjoy it fully. It's just torture. Torture, guys, I swear. So, because I'm, uh, like I've said, because I have covered uh, um, darker areas with um, black, and then I came in with, with indigo blue for just, you know, the in between blue, the in between shade between black and blue. Um, so, because of that, I also tried to match the colors because I didn't want to change those colors, but the fruit slices, <laughs> the citrus slices, the inner parts, they needed some of that texture as well because I hate the way that you know if you don't if I don't apply the color the the colored pencil to certain area of my painting it just looks out of place it has to be nice and equal that texture for me is just you know an addition just that okay so it has to be everywhere just to nicely tie all the elements together and then I really felt like those little you know, triangles, they needed a little bit more attention. So I first came in with some white colored pencil and this is um, the Prismacolor white, which is basically the most opaque <laughs> white colored pencil I have. And I came in with just a little bit of texture on the slices that were the most um, towards the front, I suppose. I keep wanting to say at the surface, I, I guess it's the blue color, but uh, they're floating on the surface. But I just wanted to add a little bit more interest. Um, I mean, if you look at the triangly bits of the fruit slices, you will see that they have a little bit of that, you know, those little lines. <coughs> Goodness. Um, they have those little, little lines. And then I came in because I wanted to add some, um, just a little bit more shiny details. Uh, with just white gouache and this is just a regular white gouache. I think it's a Windsor & Newton designer gouache, I think. I just had a tube laying around <laughs> and I wanted to add a few pits um, and then I have decided to add a few lines as well. Basically with the experiment part is that how far I can push it is my general idea. So I, I feel like I want to do it. I'm gonna do it because I can and because this is an experiment. <laughs> so yeah, so this is pretty much the last bit. Um, this is just me trying to, I, I just kept adding those lines until I was satisfied and I tried to make them varied. So I didn't really try to be too um, careful with some of them being, you know, with all of them being the same size. I just 
try to vary the size just to add a little bit of interest once again and um yeah and that's pretty much it for for this video i hope you've enjoyed this little i know this is a different type of videos that you guys were used to from the beginning but for me it's um i'm still coming back from that uh, i don't want to say art vlog i really don't um just that unhappiness with my style and I'm trying to just get myself acquainted again with painting. I mean, it has been getting better. As you guys know, the Arteza review uh, from with the shiny bunny, that one was a really big breakthrough for me. But I still feel very intimidated by my own paint. And that's not good, right? So I'm just trying to, you know, just paint, especially after being sick. You know, it, it's for me, at least if I make myself rest it's so hard to get back on track with painting and with work and everything huh <sighs> you know <laughs> so yeah um this is the finished painting you can see a little bit of a close-up of all the messiness and if you've liked this video please give it a thumbs up it will help a lot and i would like to know guys the question for today is what do you paint when what's your comfort um, thing to paint. I'm actually interested because for me, surprisingly, they're like fruit slices. I mean, it's it's just so random. <laughs> fruit slices. Um, yeah. And um, once again, I, I nicely, not naggy, I'm not being naggy, but I'm nicely reminding you that I've opened a Patreon uh, account and, and you can check it out. And there is a link in the description. <laughs> But on the on the more serious note, thank you so so much for being here and supporting me. Um yeah, thank you so so very much for watching guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye.